walking along the street or you're at a party or else you're alone and then you suddenly dig you're looking in someone's eyes you suddenly realize that this could be the start of something big in the years before television, the superstars of radio dominated the United States airwaves. Men like Jack Benny, George Burns, and Fred Allen each made their names in the heyday of radio before eventually making the jump to television. While the names of so many of these men have rightly lived on throughout the decades, many had female companions and partners who stood out as equally strong, sassy, and independent performers in their own right. These are the fierce leading ladies of radio. Jack Benny was a staple on the radio beginning in the 1930s and remained at the top of his game until the 1950s when his show made the inevitable jump to television. Throughout the length of the series, Benny was surrounded by a talented cast of supporting performers led by his wife, Mary Livingston. Livingston was born in Seattle, Washington in 1905 under the name Sadie Marks. Catherine Fuller Seeley gives one of the most comprehensive breakdowns of Livingston's early years in her book, Jack Benny in the Golden Age of American Radio Comedy. Most write-ups from primary journalistic resources of the period tend to gloss over her early days, only coming into focus when Mary meets her husband. However, Fuller Seeley writes, Sadie had regular contact with vaudeville performers throughout her youth. Her parents liked to entertain visiting Jewish actors. She recounts one of the most commonly told versions of how Jack and Mary met, describing how Zeppo Marx, the cute Marx brother, brought Jack Benny, who was then making the vaudeville circuit, to pass over dinner at the Marx house. In this version of the story, Jack is 27 and Sadie is 16, and the story goes where it should. Nowhere. Mary's 1983 New York Times obituary gives a slightly different version of events, quoting a 1942 press release recounting how Benny met his first wife when he came to her house to court her older sister, when Mary was 12. The future couple would meet again later, when she was a bit more legal. This time they were centered around Los Angeles and Mary was work working at the May Company. This is a reference any Benny fan should appreciate. A great deal of these stories have grown murky with age. Primary sources from the era tend to parrot many of the same hyper-romantic stories about not only Jack and Mary's early relationship, telling how they married in weeks after a whirlwind early married life on the vaudeville circuit. These also follow her lightning-fast rise through the ranks of the show, only beginning after another actress came down ill. Here we are at Old Camp Horn in the state of California. And the guys here are so handsome. Heidi Ho and Ocha Charney. So far, nothing. <laughs> Go ahead, Mary. I met a boy right after lunch. He got me away from the rest of the bunch. He kissed me, then ran like a deer. If he comes back, I'll, I'll buy, buy him a beer. beer. That's about the silly as anything you've done this year. When he grabbed me, I near froze, but his aim was bad and he kissed my nose. He kissed your nose? Yes. However, boys, I'm not complaining. He'd only had his basic training. Fuller Seeley details her research process as she went through Benny's scripts and the chronology of the earliest years of the show. In her hands, she describes Mary Livingston development as a character, less as a miraculous chance of fate and more of a logical progression. With each passing appearance, things developed and Mary became an increasingly important and popular figure on the show. It was at this point in the early 1930s when Sadie Marks officially changed her name to become Mary Livingston. Throughout the run of what would start as the Canada Dry program, then Great Nuts, the Jello program, and the Lucky Strike program, the show's cast would remain largely the same, as did the characters. Mary Livingston, Jack's Valet Rochester, played by Eddie Anderson, band leader Phil Harris, and announcer Don Wilson. The only change is that crooner Kenny Baker would eventually be replaced by crooner Dennis Day. And I believe Mary Livingston is important when looking at the dynamic women of the golden age of radio. While Mary is involved in the show initially as Benny's wife, she becomes more than that on the air. Fuller Seeley quotes a review of the program. Mary Livingston stooges as an impudent secretary but be refuses to be submerged in the classic dumb dame department. She gives as well as she takes. Well, that's funny. You're generally finished with your homework by this time. I know, but I'm doing it over. I never should have asked Daddy to help me. Look, he did some of my math problems, and every answer came out 39. <laughs> well, it's a number that's stuck in his head. <laughs> he's keeps the house clean. Where's Daddy now? He's in there. No. Scratching on that thing. I know just how you feel. 
At school, they can't understand why I flunk music appreciation. I know what you mean. <laughs> Guess who? Tyrone Power. It is not. Hello, wifey. How's my little sweetheart today? Little sweetheart, little sweetheart. You don't even know what today is. I do, too. It's our wedding anniversary. It was just 21 years ago today that you said I do. Yeah, me and my big mouth. In a world when she could just as easily be forced into a domestic role, Mary never bows to this societal pressure. Well, the Bennies, like so many of their radio contemporaries, were married. But Jack and Mary aren't romantically involved in the show. As such, Mary never assumes a domestic or directly supportive role in the series. Instead, she becomes an active player among the group. Often, Benny is the butt of the jokes, whether it be his age, 39, that's his story and he's sticking to it, his notorious stinginess, his violin playing. His humor does shift a bit when the show moved to television. Benny's use of facial expressions served to turn an eye on the absurdity of the situations around him. Hey, Mary, I wonder where the jewelry department is. I gotta get... The jewelry department? Yeah. Right over there. <laughs> Gee, I hope they still have a nice selection. <laughs> However, this element is not as prevalent when the show is on radio, obviously. Fuller Seeley continues, Benny and the other men fall short of the stereotypical definitions of heterosexual masculinity. Whether it be Benny's vain and insecure character, Dennis Day's boyish crooner, or Phil Harris's unapologetic drunk, Mary manages to be the one with her crap together. However, she's never the straight woman or not in on the joke. She's laughing right along with everyone else, and this is usually at Jack's expense. Hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Hiya, fellas. Whistle at me like you did outside. You're really popular here, Mary. You got a nice hand. That ain't all they're applauding, brother. Oh, yes, your figure is more alluring than the average top sergeant, I think. <laughs> yes, indeedy. Oh, uh, say, Mary, I tried to reach you on the phone early this morning. I was going to give you a lift here to Camp Hawk. I wish you had, Don. I drove in with Phil and the orchestra. They chartered a bus. Oh, the orchestra boys took a bus, eh? Yeah, 18 wolves on a greyhound. <laughs> oh, I'm only kidding, Jack. They behave like gentlemen. In fact, they rehearse their band numbers all the way down here. In the bus? Uh-huh. Boy, is my neck stiff from ducking a trombone. Well, you've got my sympathy, Mary. Phil's orchestra blasting away, and you and the driver had to sit there and listen. What driver? He jumped out the window In and... In Pomona, I know. <laughs> Oh, he couldn't stand it, eh? Well, who drove the bus, Phil? I mean, uh, I mean, who drove the bus, Phil? No, I did. Phil was up on the roof taking a sun bath. All right, so I made a mistake. <laughs> really? Uh-huh. Well, well, a sun bath. What a character. Eventually, Livingston stepped back from the spotlight into the 1950s as the show made the jump to television, with most sources citing this was due to extreme stage fright. Benny passed away in 1974. The couple had been happily married for almost 50 years at that point. Livingston is quoted in her New York Times obituary. She says, Every day since Jack is gone, the florist has delivered long-stemmed red rose to my home. Jack had included a provision for the flowers in his will, one red rose to be delivered every day for the rest of my life. Mary Livingston passed away in 1983. Well, the names and faces from the heyday of radio became a little murkier and fuzzier with each passing day. She remains not only Mrs. Jack Benny, but an active and vibrant part of a comedic dynasty. Stay tuned for more Haired Female Gaze productions as we look at classic popular culture through a historical and feminist lens. My name is Kim. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at kpeer624. And as always, if you like what you're seeing, please like and subscribe. Thanks, guys. We're glad to be here, old Camp Hahn. Phil and Dennis, me and Don. What about me? And good old Jack, who is our clown man. And Virgil Reimer, world's best clown man. Virgil, you keep out of this. Jerk. <laughs> the end.